Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about some special angles for which you can find some certain values of sine, cosine, and tangent. This video kind of relies on the fact that you know about the Pythagorean theorem, which is in the core IGCSE mathematics syllabus. And the Pythagorean theorem basically states that, uh, let me get into pen mode first. The Pythagorean theorem basically states that for any right angled triangle with side lengths C being the hypotenuse and an A and B being the remaining two sides, that the side length of the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares, a squared plus b squared, of the other two sides of the right angled triangle. So this is where we're going to be basing our stuff from. All right, so let's, let's, let's get down to business here. So what kind of angles are we talking about when I say special angles? Well, there are actually a bunch of angles that you can figure out the sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta for without a calculator. Normally, these kind of functions need a calculator do to do for any kinds of non-special angles because it's very difficult to figure out just on intuition. For example, what are the side lengths of a triangle that has an angle of 57 degrees? What are the ratios here? You certainly don't know that. I certainly don't know that. I don't know how to calculate that. But, well, I suppose you just put that in a calculator. What's sine 57, you ask your calculator. But say in a non-calculator exam, such as the core math exam, you might want to know from heart, or you might want to know just for speed in a regular exam, the sine, cosine, and tangent values for some special angles. So when I say special angles, I am talking about the angles for 30 degrees, 40 to 45 degrees, 60 degrees. Even though such triangles like this and this, even though they're not really triangles because I'm talking about places where the angle theta might be 90 degrees or the angle theta might be 0 degrees, there are values of these functions for those kind of, di those kind of dimensions as well. And it's quite freaky, but it's something that you'll get used to. So I'm just going to talk about some special sign values for these angles only first. So these angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or in fact, you could also call them in radians. So say pi over six radians, pi over four radians, and pi over two, pi over three radians. These trigonometric values all have special things. All right. so. First, we're going to work out what are the trig values for 30 and 60 degrees. This is kind of based off the equilateral triangle and the properties of it. So say you have an equilateral triangle here. The goal here is to find sine 30, sine pi over 6, find sine 60, or which would be sine pi over 3, find cosine 30, which would be sine pi over 6, or cosine pi over 6, in fact, and find cosine 60, or cosine over three. Now this may seem like a gargantuan task, and we're only giving ourselves this equilateral triangle to do it with. So, in actual fact, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to give each side a length of like two, say for example, and I'm going to split this triangle exactly in half, like this, the, making this line a bisector, a perpendicular bisector of our bottom side of the triangle. So we'll know that this length is equal to 1, and this length is equal to 1. And you might notice that this triangle, although every angle is 60, when you split it up, you get two right angle triangles. We can actually work with those. So if we isolate one of the right angle triangles here, we'll get that this has side length of 2, this has side length of 1, this will be 60 degrees, or high over 3 radians, 
and this will be 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians. And you'll know that this side length is 1, and this side length is 2, and to find the last side length, you can actually use Pythagoras' theorem. So c squared is a squared plus b squared, and c being 2, 2 squared is 1 squared plus b squared, or 4 is 1 plus b squared. Then 3 is b squared, and b is the positive root 3, because if it was a negative, it, you can't have a side length that's a negative. So, of course, that's not the case, but it's positive root 3. And you'll get this. So, if you go back to our original definition of sine and cosine, and also tangent, let's actually try and find tangent 30, which would be tan pi over 3, and find tangent 60 as well. Sorry, this is tan pi over 6. This would be tan pi over 3. We want to find all of these values. So we go back to our original so ka toa and we'll find sine of a theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse side. So say we're taking our angle to be 30 or pi over 6. So sine 30 is equal to sine pi over 6 is equal to, well, what's the opposite side? The opposite side to this is going to be the 1, and the hypotenuse is going to be the 2. So it's 1 over 2. Sine 30, or sine pi over 6 rad radians, is going to be 1 over 2. Then these two sides also show up in when you're trying to find the cosine of 60. So the cosine of 60 here is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so 1 over 2 as well. So cosine 60 is going to be cosine pi over 6, or cosine pi over 3, in fact, which is also going to be 1 over 2. And I'm just going to leave it at that, that I did this in this order. I want you to try and think about why I did that and why these might be the same. I'll explore it in the next video, but anyway, we shall see. And say, for example, we want to find sine 60. And when you're using sine 60, the opposite side will be root 3, and the hypotenuse will be 2. So sine 60 degrees, which is equal to sine pi over 3, is going to be root 3 over 2. And cosine 30, because it's using the same two sides, is the ratio between the same two sides as sine 60. So taking this to be theta, this will be the adjacent sign, this will be the hypotenuse. Cosine 30 will be equal to this value, which will be equal to cosine pi over 6 radians. And this will be root 3 over 2. So what about tangent for these two values? Well, first let's find tangent 30. It's tangent 30 is going to be the... Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over root 3. But normally we don't like to use our third as a denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by root 3 over 3, which is 1. And these two become 3, and you'll find that tangent 30 is root 3 over 3, or 1 over root 3, depends whatever floats your boat. And, of course, this is equivalent to the tan of pi over 6 radians. And also, on top of that, tan 60 is looking at the opposite and adjacent angles in the other order. So, of course, it'll be with tan 60. The opposite side is the root 3 and the adjacent side is the 1. So, tan 60 is, uh, say, uh, root 
3 over 1, or just root 3. So tan 60, which is tan pi over 3 radians, is going to be root 3 over 1, which is going to be root 3, because it's this side over this side. So yep, now we know all of these values, and now we're going to look at the tan and sine of 45 degrees. And basically to do that, we just need to use the right angled isosceles triangle, which is a special triangle which has angles 45, 45, and 90. And we'll set both sides to 1. We can use the Pythagoras' theorem to find that this will be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is going to be root 2. And so sine of 45 is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, or 1 over root 2. And you multiply both sides by root 2 over root 2, which is just equivalent to 1, so it's like multiplying by 1, and you'll get this is root 2 over 2. So sine 45 degrees, which is equal to sine pi over 4 radians, is root 2 over 2. And if you notice, if you look at the cosine, the angle the, the side length for the opposite and the adjacent are the same. O is equal to A. And that means that cosine 45 will also be cosine 45 will also be root 2 over 2. And finally, tangent 45. This is a special one because it's the opposite over adjacent. It says opposite is equal to, you, to, to adjacent. It'll be the ratio of 1 to 1, which is just 1. So tangent 45 degrees, which is tangent pi over 4 radians, is just going to be 1. So now we go back to our original thing, our big table of numbers. We have pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, aka 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then the sine theta for 30 degrees and the cos theta for 60 degrees are both 1 over 2. The sine theta and sine theta of 60 degrees and the cosine theta for 30 degrees are root 3 over 2. And the sine theta and cos theta, which are the same for 45 degrees are root 2 over 2. Now, I'm going to add these root signs here, and I'm adding them for a reason. I want you to see if you can spot the pattern, because I'm going to give it a couple seconds. As you go up this, you'll get root 1, root 2, and then root 3 over 2 for the sine theta. And the same thing as you go down. You get root 3, root 2, and then root 1 for cosine theta across these special values. And is that a coincidence? Nobody knows. Well, actually, people do know, but that's beyond the scope of what I'm teaching about. But anyway, now we just get down to the fact that tan theta for 30 degrees will be equivalent to root 3 over 3. Tan theta for 45 degrees is going to be 1. And tan theta for 60 degrees is just going to be plain old root 3. And these are some special values that you'll need to know in order to uh, finally get some better understanding of the trigonometric values. So now you can work out quickly on the spot things like bam, this triangle here is going to have a side length of 8 here. So what's the side length here if this is 30 degrees? And you'll just know that, hey, uh, it's talking about the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so we're going to be looking at cosine 30, which is, of course, root 3 over 2. And the ratio here is root 3 to 2, so this is going to be 2 times 8 over root 3. Or essentially, this is just 8 divided by cosine 30, and this is going to be 16 over root 3. So now you know instantly that this is going to be 16 over root 3.
I'm going to give you a challenge problem, which might be interesting. If you have a triangle here, and this angle is 30 degrees, and this angle is 60 degrees, but it's split in half, and you know that this distance here from the split in half is um, 2 degrees, I mean 2 centimeters, what is this length here? This is a right angle. This is going to be 60 degrees split in half. And yeah. All right, so this is quite a long video. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about something called the unit circle, which is basically a graph of a circle of radius 1 and why it's useful to learning more about sine, cosine, and theta. But until next time, thank you for watching.